Welcome to the second session of oral presentations. This follows the plenary sessions on advances in anti-doping analysis. During this oral presentation session, we have four paper presentation from the various branches of forensic science. You can start. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the topic for my today's presentation is forensic profiling of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons for source identification in the burning of hair sample with different ignitable liquids. And my presentation code is ICAFS CT01. Uh, we'll start with the introduction. So, fire investigation. It is uh, studied under the subfield of forensic science, that is, forensic chemistry. The, then, the main role of the forensic scientist is to uh, determine the cause of the fire, like whether it is accidental or uh, natural or, with, or intentional. So, in this case, is how they can determine they have to identify the ignitable liquid. It means is there, it means is that fire involves or any presence of ignitable liquid. If yes, then which ignitable liquid is involved? So as we know that the more easily commonly uh, found ignitable liquids to us are petrol, diesel, kerosene. So whenever the uh, we received a sample in a lab, we received in a two types. So the uh, first one are the fire debris. And the second one uh, are from a human uh, human origin. Suppose if there are fire debris, so it means our crime committed at any property, at a home or anything. And suppose in a human burning, that is in a bright burning cases, we received hair and skin sample. So in routine fire excellent method, we collect a sample, we extract it and analyze with GCMS and GCFID. And the pattern is obtained, which is compared with uh, that of control, petrol, diesel, and kerosene. So, but because of the destructive nature of the fire, it is quite, uh, it is difficult to identify. Uh, because the only the uh, kerosene, petrol, and diesel, give, uh, it has a different carbon chain. So that the based on the di distribution of the carbon chain, we can identify the pattern. But what if the ignitable liquid is other than this petrol, diesel, kerosene? Suppose if it is used, if they use any uh, like any other ignitable source uh, like uh, lubricating oil, furnace oil, that is. So it is quite difficult to identify. So in my study, I have used a polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. That is, these are previously used for the source identification in oil spill cases. So I have utilized this PAHS in fire investigation. Ma'am, next slide, please. So I have used a matrix of hair because these are commonly received in the cases of uh, human burning and bright burning cases. And I have used a 15 different uh, solvent to burn my hair sample. Uh, some of these are household samples or some of our industries like, like sanitizer, nail paint remover, a surgical spirit, which are uh, that we are use, easily used at our home. And others like petrol, diesel, these are uh, industrial based solvents. Next slide. Uh, the first I have prepared the sample in which I have taken a almost five gram of hair on which 10 gram of sample, each sample, uh, each ignitable liquid is added and it is completely burned. Then after burning, the sample is stored in an airtight glass chamber. Then for the extraction, I have taken a two gram of sample, uh, which is extracted with 30 ml of hexane acetone dichloromethane in one as to one, uh, is to one ratio uh, with a sonicator. And finally, the extracts are collected, which is filtered out and analyzed with GC MSMS system. Next slide, please. Uh, for my analysis, I have used the ATPHS standard, which consists of SNAphthalene, SNAphthalene, and thracine, uh, and rest are uh, mentioned on the slide. Next, for GC MSMS condition, I have used a column, which is HP5MS detector uh, source used this electron uh, ionization with the helium flow of one ml per minute and run time for 25 minutes. Next slide, ma'am, please. Uh, first of all, uh, I have done the qualitative as well as the quantitative analysis. For the quantitative analysis, I have prepared a calibration curve. And for that, I have used a eight point calibration curve, which is of five PPB, 10, 25, 50, 75, 100, 200, and 500 PPB. So based on that, the mixture is a, like this is a mixture of 18 PHS. So I'm just here presenting only the one calibration curve, which is for the next saline. Similarly, it is obtained for the rest of the 17 PHS. 
so this is the gc msms chromatogram for hair which is burn with the sanitizer sample so similarly it is obtained for the rest of the ignitable liquid next slide so today i'm just going to uh, provide only the qualitative data not the quantitative data so this is the qualitative data if you see the all each uh, different ignitable liquid consists of the different uh, different phs suppose in sanitizer uh, we have a two uh, two methyl naphthalene one methyl naphthalene sn naphthalene sn naphthalene fluorine similarly the pattern is obtained for rest of the uh, uh, rest of the ignitable liquid so ma'am next slide please so based on the study it was found that the 18 phs found different in different solvents even household chemicals such as sanitizer nail paint remover liquor surgical spirit initially does not contain any phs but however after burning it shows a certain or it generate a phs with a different concentration and again phs forms depend on the temperature at which the ignitable liquid burn suppose if we consider a, a ethanol which is present in a surgical spirit and the petroleum product both are produce a different type and different concentration of phs so based on the study uh, based on the my study it is concluded that phs can be used to replace identification of uh, ignitable liquid which is previously used in the forensic laboratories thank you ma'am good afternoon everyone the topic for the, today's presentation is detection of pesticides and common fruits and vegetables collected from different regions of bangalore city yes, the introduction as you all know toxicology mainly deals with studies of mischievous effects that may be caused by chemicals on human beings and environment forensic toxicology is a subdivision of toxicology that aids the medico legal investigation helping in death and poisoning and drug abuse cases the use of pesticides have provided unpro unquestionable benefits in increasing the agriculture products however it has a drawback of pesticide residues which remain on fruits and vegetables constituting a potential risk to consumer a, con a chronic uh, toxicity of pesticide are injured uh, are enter, uh, enters the consumers uh, through fruits and vegetables which causes the adverse health risk various analytical methods like glass chromatography and uh, gcms uh, gcms and high performance liquid chromatography and thin layer chromatography are used to screen quantify and confirm the pesticide residue in fruits and vegetables for both research and regulatory purpose the level of pesticide residues are controlled by maximum residue limits which is established for each country for specific pesticide the maximum residue limit is defined has a maximum uh, concentration of pesticide residues legally permitted in fruits and uh, food products these are the few re review of literature the tiwari etla in 1790 uh, 1979 has uh, uh, explained how effective as thin layer chromatography in suppression identification and detection of pesticide from autopsy tissue and other two the ramesh uh, hl in 2013 has evaluated the pesticide residue toxicity in vegetables and fruits grown in bangalore rural district using gcms and electron capture detector anand etla and 2020 have conducted a similar investigation on pesticide residues in carrot sample collected from five different regions of current karnataka using gcms from abu review of literature it was noticed that there was no study done recently on pesticide detection in fruits and vegetables collected from different regions of urban bangalore the objective of our research was to detect a possible presence of pesticides in common vegetable and fruits brought from local markets in bangalore as well as through online shopping platform the detection is carried out by thin layer chromatography of control pesticide sample as well as the vegetable and fruit sample collected from different regions of bangalore city the standard pesticide chosen for the study was malathion and carbofurin which belongs to organophosphate and carbamate classes of pesticide respectively the malathion and carbofurin was chosen for our study because the malathion and carbofurin are available uh, available hence frequently used in vegetable and fruit cultivation hence most frequently used in 
homicidal and suicidal cases. The organophosphate and carbamate classes of pesticides are broadly used on agriculture due to the similar function because they both act as a inhibitors for acetyl chloristerase. Acetyl chloristerase is a neurotransmitter which helps in uh, which has uh, which acts as a messenger for central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The sample collection was done. The vegetables and foods that are mostly consumed in raw form without peeling their skin were chosen for the study as the pesticide residues are usually found on vegetables and fruits peel. Five different samples, which includes vegetables like cabbage, carrots, spinach, and the fruits, tomato, and grapes were chosen for the study. Bangalore is a large metropolitan city, hence it is imperative to choose the main regions for city for sample collection. For this purpose, the Bangalore was divided into four major zones to collect the samples from as people nowadays prefer to purchase groceries online, a leading online grocery shopping platform called Big Basket was also cho chosen for sample collection. For North Zone, we used Hebal, uh, we collected from Hebal, and for South Zone, we uh, collected from Jainagar. And for each, we choose the region of Sivajinagar, and for West, Rajajinagar, and online through Big Basket. A thin layer chromatography is a semi-qualitative technique which is used for detecting the pesticide and used in uh, various forensic science laboratory for analyzing the evidence. Hence, it is a technique used to isolate non-volatile mixtures. Thin layer chromatography uh, involves three different steps, spotting, development, and visualization. Spotting was done by extracting the sample with a, uh, in the presence of hexane and acetone. Then uh, the spotting was done using microcapillary tubes. Two different dif uh, solvent systems were used for two different control pesticides, and uh, two plates were placed respectively. And the TLC was run for 10 to 15 minutes, and regular monitoring was done. For visualization, the tolerance reagent was used for malathion, and alkaline fast blue was used for carbofurane, and the results were obtained. Retention factor was calculated. On comparison of standard carbofurane, the carrot uh, samples which were collected from South Zone and online shopping was found to be uh, the same, give same result of 0 0.8, and malathion was not detected. A carbofurane, a carbamate pesticide, was detected in carrot samples collected from South Zone as well as online shopping platform. The result indicated the occurrence of pesticide residue. Conclusion Although Pesticides are used in intention to control pests. They are found to be capable of eliciting adverse health effects in individuals who are exposed to it. Hence, the regular monitoring of pesticide has to be done, and this project was conducted in, uh, in the objective to detect the possible presence of pesticides in fruits and vegetables collected from different regions of Bangalore. The results emphasizes the need for continuous monitoring of pesticide residue in commonly consumed fruits and vegetables in urban Bangalore, thereby creates awareness among the people about the same. The farmers have to be educated about the application of pesticide uh, sprayed to the fruits and vegetables, and the consumers have to be encouraged to use organic fruits and vegetables available. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'll be presenting a study to estimate the extent of inefficacy of presumptive tests on blood stains contaminated with common contaminants encountered in southern India. So my presenter code is ICAFS BSO2. Uh, so as we all know that blood is the most common biological evidence encountered in violent crimes and we use presumptive tests to identify it as they are highly sensitive uh, in nature. Uh, chances of blood getting contaminated is high and nowadays uh, criminals are sprinkling chili powder to avoid detection by sniffer dogs. Uh, the use of cosmetics predominantly seen in India can also be one such source of contamination. Although the efficacy of presumptive tests is highly reliable, in presence of uh, such contaminants, their uh, efficacy can be altered. So in this study, attempts were made to identify the extent of impact of common contaminants on presumptive tests used to identify blood at the scene of crime. Uh, so the uh, presumptive tests chosen for this study were benzidine and caesarmeyer, and the results are as listed. Uh, Ma'am, next slide. 
Uh, so the common contaminants chosen for this study were turmeric, kumkum, and coconut oil. So turmeric has many uses that it is used as uh, herbal medicines for cuts, uh, burns, bruises, and also in the treatment of smallpox and chickenpox. It is also applied on a, uh, as a paste by South Indian women to remove uh, excess facial hair, to improve complexion, and also to get rid of various facial con uh, skin conditions such as acne. And uh, kumkum is used uh, by uh, Hindu married women, traditionally worn as sindoor in their side parting, and also it is used in religious purposes during pujas and the coconut oil is used as a hair oil and also as a massage oil for babies. So these uh, contaminants were chosen because their usage was found to be rampant in the region of South India. Uh, methodology. So to analyze the effect of these three contaminants on presumptive tests, the entire study was split into three phases. So phase one is conceptualization. In this phase, attempts were made to test the contaminated blood in increasing concentration of the three contaminants. The threshold concentration at which each contaminant gave a false negative for each of the presumptive tests was identified in this phase. So phase two is replication. In this phase, the identified threshold concentration of the contamination was repeated multiple times to check the accuracy of the findings. Uh, phase three, validation. In this phase, uh, the findings were statistically analyzed to identify the validity of the identified results. Phase one, conceptualization. So standard blood was prepared for analysis by diluting 100 microliter of fresh blood in 100 ml of normal saline. Uh, contaminant stock solution was prepared by dissolving one gram of each contaminant in 25 ml of distilled water as follows. One gram of turmeric in 25 ml of distilled water, one gram of kumkum in 25 ml of distilled water, one ml of coconut oil in 25 ml of distilled water. So for the purpose of conceptualization, three sets of standard uh, blood was serially diluted up to the sixth dilution separately, and 100 microliter of the specific stock contaminant solution was added to uh, each of the six dilutions separately and mixed thoroughly. So that is one set for turmeric, one set for kumkum, and one set for coconut oil. So the concentration of the blood as well as the contaminant is mentioned down uh, in the smart art. Uh, so for each of the prepared contaminant blood stain, both benzidine and caseremia tests were performed. Uh, so result of conceptualization. Um, when turmeric was used as contaminant, benzidine test was able to detect blood up to the first dilution alone. Um, can you uh, move to the next slide? Uh, uh, and from the second dilution onwards, no color change was observed. As for Kessel Mayer, uh, the pink color of Kessel Mayer could not be interpreted due to the interference of turmeric. Um, uh, when uh, kumkum was used as a contaminant, benzene test was able to detect blood only up to the first dilution. And from the second dilution onwards, no color change was observed. Uh, as for Kessel Mayer, similar uh, results were found where uh, the interference of uh, where the pink color was uh, interference was seen because of the where the pink color uh, couldn't be interpreted due to the interference of uh, kumkum. So it was decided to discontinue a uh, Kessel Mayer test for turmeric and kumkum as it also gave false positive results in absence of blood. Ma'am, next slide. Uh, so when coconut oil was used as contaminant, benzidine test was able to detect blood up to the third dilution. And from the fourth dilution onwards, it was not able to detect blood. As for Kessel Mayer, it was able to detect blood up to the second dilution. And from the third dilution onwards, it was not able to detect blood. So in case of coconut oil, both uh, benzidine and Kessel Mayer tests would be performed for phase two. Ma'am, next slide. Uh, phase two replication. So the first dilution at which each contaminant gave a false negative uh, to the contaminated blood was tested against benzidine and caseinia tests separately. Uh, uh, was repeated thirty times each. That is for turmeric. The second dilution was repeated thirty times and tested against benzidine. For kumkum, the second dilution was repeated thirty times and tested against benzidine. For coconut oil, the fourth dilution was repeated 30 times and tested against uh, benzidine. And third dilution was repeated 30 times and tested against Kessel Mayer. So this step was performed to ensure the accuracy of findings of conceptualization. Ma'am, next slide. Uh, so in all the 30 attempts, uh, it was found that uh, no color change was observed. Ma'am, next slide. Uh, phase three validation. So as we previously saw that all the 30 times the results proved to be same, that is negative for blood. Hence control samples of diluted blood without the addition of contaminant was also tested alongside to ensure diluted blood's positivity to presumptive tests and all the samples produced positive results. So it was determined that contaminant addition was certainly reducing the efficiency of presumptive tests, that is benzidine and caseinmeyer. 
as the results in all 30 replicated attempts were found to be false negative, the need for statistical uh, validation is absent. So findings of the study. So when turmeric was used as contaminant, it was found that benzidine tests did not detect the presence of blood for the second dilution and beyond with concentration of blood and contaminant as listed. Uh, when kumkum was used as contaminant, it was found that benzidine tests did not detect the presence of blood for the second dilution and beyond with concentration of blood and contaminant as listed. The Kesselmeyer test could not be interpreted as pink color due to the interference of turmeric and kumkum. Uh, when coconut oil was used as contaminant, it was found that benzene test did not detect the presence of blood for fourth dilution and beyond with concentration of blood uh, and contaminant as listed. Uh, and uh, the Kesselmeyer test did not detect the presence of blood for third dilution and beyond with the concentration of uh, blood and contaminant as listed. Ma'am, next slide. Conclusion, in cases where scientific evidence was heavily relied on, false positive or false negative results can be a major concern they can lead to rampant rate of acquittal. Presumptive tests are relied on by field scientific officers to decide whether the evidence needs to be collected and forwarded to the forensic science laboratories. When these tests provide false positive or false negative results, this can adversely affect the progress of investigation. This study addresses the extent to which common contaminants can lead to false interpretation of commonly used presumptive tests this study can be a basis on which a more extensive study can be performed to understand the impact of these contaminants as well as similar contaminants on the presumptive test at large. Ma'am, next slide. So these were the references that were used. Ma'am, next slide. So acknowledgement, I would like to uh, express my deep and sincere gratitude to my uh, research mentor, my lab facil uh, facility, and also my teammates. Last but not the least, I would like to thank the conference conveners for giving me an opportunity to present uh, the findings of my study. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So my title is to contrive artificial blood for use in demonstration of blood pattern analysis. My presenter code is ICAFS underscore BS underscore O underscore skip. Next slide, ma'am. Blood stain pattern analysis is the interpretation of blood stain at a crime scene in order to recreate the action that caused the bloodshed. DP is one of the most major forensic aspects in crime reconstruction, and it helps in understanding the events which transpired during the crime. It also helps to fix the modus operandi well, as well as the actus reus. DP is a science which requires a lot of training and many hours of hands-on experience with blood patterns. It also raises the need for human blood. As we know, human blood is a biohazardous substance which decays and needs efforts in preservation and handling. Not only human blood, animal blood also has similar drawbacks. Because of these drawbacks, there's a purpose for alternative substitute that we've been developed in the past. So the substitute that were developed in the past were either patented or expensive and not easily obtainable or requires a lot of raw materials to be recreated. Next slide, ma'am. So our objective of the study was to contrive alternative substitute of blood, which can be developed in a simpler way and with low expense components. <laughs> the contrived substitute and to validate the suitability for demonstration of blood pattern cat blood pattern analysis to, con to provide the composition of the most suitable composition for further validation with human blood characteristics. So our methodology was conducted in three different phases. The first was preliminary development that was different constituents of the existing alternatives were studied and her formulations were made using them and they were tested against the human blood. Evaluation. Evaluation of the best suited alternative from phase one was performed multiple times. Ma'am, the previous slide. Previous. Yeah. The validation results were statistically analyzed. So our study used a comparison between the human blood patterns and alternatives at perpendicular angle 90 degree that are both from 40 centimeter height and 70 centimeter height. And the angles we used are 20 degree and 60 degree angles. Next slide, ma'am. The phase one, so preliminary development. Here, mixtures of multiple constituents present in existing alternatives like cellulose, starch, cornstarch, glycerol, methyl cellulose, waitress, lice, albumin, different coloring dyes were used and were attempted in different ratios. Among them, 
the best were albumin, star, uh, bovine, and starch and color dye were found to be the principal compounds that required to give the alternative the traits of human blood to form similar patterns. Six different formulations of the above three constituents, that is nothing but the albumin, bovine, starch, and color dye, were prepared in different ratios and they were tested among which the best composition we got was albumin, which was three gram, starch, one gram, and the coloring dye we used here is gram saffronine. Five ml in 15 ml of distilled water showed promising. Next slide. Now. So here, these are the uh, pictures uh, where we have developed as a substitute. So the, to the left side, it's the angles that is 40 centimeter and 70 centimeter and to the right side are the angles. Uh, so the left side are the heights and the right side are the angles. Uh, phase two is evaluation. The above substitute were tested multiple times in comparison with human blood. So here we've used the blood of different uh, persons. So here we have different hemoglobin concentration. So a total of 63 attempts were made in which day one, eight attempts, day two, 40 attempts, day three, 15 attempts. The mean values obtained with blood and the alternative is shown in the tables. Next slide. So here perpendicular draw 40 centimeter. Here the mean value of the blood and the substitute is uh, negligible. The standard deviation is also negligible. And in the perpendicular drop of 70 centimeter, here the mean value of the blood as well as the substitute is negligible and the standard deviation is also negligible. In 20 degree, the mean uh, width by length ratio with the blood and the mean width by length ratio with substitute, here the uh, mean is uh, negligible but uh, and also the standard deviation is negligible. But mean estimated angle with blood and mean estimated angle with substitute, the standard deviation was um, uh, uh, so uh, significant. So the mean uh, when the uh, width by length ratio with blood and the mean uh, in the 60 degree angle, the mean width by length ratio with blood and the mean width by length ratio with substitute, here the mean and standard deviation were negligible. But in mean estimated angle with blood and the mean estimated angle with substitute, the standard deviation was uh, significant because we used crude methods to get, uh, we, here we used crude methods to get the angle 20 degree and 60 degree during performance of the test. So these are the pictures. Uh, so to the left side, it's the blood. We uh, here, these are the drops of the bl uh, blood that we've been used. That is 90 degree fall from 40 centimeter height. And to the right side, these are the substitute. So to the left side is the blood and to the right side is the substitute, which was done by 90 degree fall from 70 centimeter height. Here 20 degree, uh, 20 degree angle fall. So to the left side, it's the blood and to the right side is the substitute. And 60 degree fall to the left side is the blood and to the right side is the substitute. Next slide. Now. Results. The above tabulated result reveals the average of values in each parameter chosen with respect to blood and substitute. In perpendicular drops of 40 cm and 70 cm height, the study reveals that both with blood and substitute, the diameter is more or less the same with a negligible standard deviation. In angle drop of 20 degree angle, the study reveals that the width by length ratio has more or less the same value for both blood and substitute, but the estimated angle has wide variation. This can be due to crude means used to arrive at an angle of 20 degree during the performance of the test as mentioned earlier. Similarly, an angle drops of 60 degree angle, the study reveals that the width by length ratio has more or less the same value for both blood and substitute, but the estimated angle has a wide variation. This can be due to crude means used to arrive at an angle of 60 degree during the performance of the test. Next slide. Conclusion, alternative blood is required for demonstration of blood pattern analysis for academic purpose. Even though blood is idle, it is difficult to obtain in large quantities and also it poses a threat as it is biohazardous. The available source of artificial blood for demonstration of blood pattern analysis are extremely expensive because they are patented composition. So our study has developed an artificial blood that mimics the blood and has given good result and what was way easy to prepare. Even though we did not get the exact color, here we increased the quantity of the saffronine, but what happened is the 
so we'll stick back to the composition that we used before earlier so and we focus more on the patterns that were created by the blood so the uh, but the patterns that we developed were very similar to the blood patterns 